So welcome to the Margin Business Digital Entrepreneur Podcast. Um, another episode today with a very interesting guest. Um, the name is Steve Cahan. Um, I hope I say your name correctly, Steve. You do. Um, Steve is a Wall Street Journal best-selling author, a two-time TEDx speaker. That's what I like really much. Like TEDx speaker is is definitely something um, where you really have to be somebody who is a very good storyteller. Um, I really like to listen to TEDx call um, uh, TEDx talks a lot um, because they're very interesting, and very informative, and very. Um, the time goes by in. 15 minutes when most of the speakers are talking the 15 minutes it's it's like oh no it's already done you know so yeah and steve is a marketing expert so steve um i'm very happy to have you here uh, on today and i'm sure um you can share a lot of value for our uh, community for our listeners um for all the amazon sellers for all the digital entrepreneurs who are listening um around the world today um, Steve, please tell us a little bit more about yourself, and then we take it from there. Yeah, sure. So you captured my background quite well. Uh, I, uh, in addition to that, uh, at work uh, with a number of venture capital firms uh, in the States to help their portfolio companies uh, do a much better job of utilizing their digital marketing strategies to better contribute to uh, their revenue growth at reasonable cost. But for me, just really my journey sort of started many years ago where if I kind of took a step back, I remember I would listen to my father. He would tell me so many times when I was growing up, he'd say, Steve, get your degree, go to work for a large corporation, you work hard, they'll take care of you and you'll have a great career. And so that was kind of the path that I took and I graduated college and then uh, went to work at a large company. And I remember one day about a year into the job, I was uh, in my cubicle and I was staring at this pile of claims that I was supposed to process that day and wondering how on earth will I ever get ahead? I was down to $50 in, in my bank account and the student loans that I had used to grab a hold of my paychecks before they ever even had a chance to hit my bank account. And so I uh, asked myself a, a really important question early on, which was how could I earn a great living doing what I love? And so for me, I realized it, it wasn't going to be in a bigger bureaucratic organization. It was going to be uh, joining a startup. And so I made the leap to the startup world and seven startups later and generating over five billion in shareholder value. Wow. It's it's been a amazing <laughs> ride. Definitely. That's uh, that's something we need to touch on uh, later on as well. But before that, I would like to know a little bit more about you. So um, who was the most influential um, uh, person in your life? I guess I guess it was your father, as you already said, um, who uh, guided you kind of uh, the way to the um, to the corporate life. You're right. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's so many uh, people and uh, just so many mentors. Uh, and, and certainly my father and my family was one of them, my, my mother as well. But uh, also, I had a mentor early on in my career. I was lucky to go to work for a cybersecurity company in Texas okay. and work for a just super CEO by the name of Doug Irwin. And what Doug did is um, Doug was a, uh, a just a super successful entrepreneur. He now runs a venture capital firm. And I remember when I joined that startup that he led and how he defined it. And he, he you know, a lot of organizations think of startups. Well, it, it's a small company, right? And, and he defined a startup that it was it was very much like the last frontier for outlaws, a, a place where nonconformists could live, create, and sell their ideas. And to me, it was like, how cool? Who doesn't want to be involved in that? It's a place, 
in many ways where you get to be the rough riding rebel running circles around the slower moving, uh, bigger bureaucratic organizations. And so he taught me that a startup very much is a culture. It's a mindset. It's a it's a team of crazies that are just hell bent on changing the world. And uh, and it was really that perspective uh, through which he uh, built the company, led the company, and really treated uh, every employee like they were family. So much so that that company uh, it grew very very rapidly, and and we sold had a really good exit many years ago, over fifteen years ago, and still to this day there were about three hundred employees in the company when it exited. And uh, wow. we still get together, and much of those 300 employees attend annual reunion parties, where we still get together once a year and sort of celebrate one another about how wonderful it was uh, to go on that ride that we did. And, and, uh, and, and that is something that really started with Doug, creating that environment and teaching me how to do that and okay. why it's so important and the fact that so many people get together so many years after the company is sold to reminisce how awesome it was just as a testament to the type of company that he inspired us all to build wow this is uh this is very nice you know so and this is as well where you're beginning to start to learn your craft right so your 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 so-called superpower um got you know came out of all of this uh, when you are when you have a mentor when you when you have a lot of good people around you uh, obviously you're um, you're changing from the path it should be like that you know because if it's if it's a uh, positively influential people they change you on your path for the better and you take a whole other route so i guess for you it was exactly uh, what happened and here we have again for the young listeners or for, for all the listeners as well, make sure that your circle is very, very well chosen, you know, that you sit with people you really can have a talk with who maybe, maybe you, you, you're not the smartest in the room is uh, that's what I'm always saying. You know, it's uh, I feel, I feel good when I'm not the smartest in the room, you know, so I have always to, to try to, to, to come up with something. So this is, this is definitely um, something we, we can learn from and what I like, always um to 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 bring up a lot so moving forward a little bit as well um to the uh, later um life because right now um you are running um a company as well a part of being a tedx speaker a part of being uh, um an author for books uh book or books how many books did you write already uh, I, I've written two books so the latest was high velocity digital marketing which which is that Wall Street Journal bestseller. <laughs> but prior to that, I wrote a book called Be a Startup Superstar, which was okay. why a young professional should choose a startup route, how to, uh, in many ways, uh, choose the right startup, because many, many don't make it, as, as we all know. And then sure. once you get there, uh, sort of what I captured was 32 actions, attitudes, and behaviors that I've seen the most successful entrepreneurs have so that those in startups could rocket their way into the C-suite. Okay. Okay. So, and when you um, normally for, for TEDx talks, maybe we can, you can um, give us a little bit more uh, insight in that. Um, you have been invited uh, to, to, to TEDx talks. And uh, how was this going? I mean, how was the feeling when you stand in front of people? Because most of the time or nowadays what we do, we speak a lot into our microphone. Um, we don't have the exposure um, of, uh, of people anymore. And especially a crowd like in TEDx, it's obviously something else than talking at a conference. Um, how is that? Tell us a little bit how you, how you feel about that. Well, so... It's an amazing experience that I would encourage anyone who is thinking about it to absolutely pursue. And the reason for that is, uh, you, first of all, you, as you well know, you've got to be able to boil down your message into a very, very uh, 
a short amount of time. So you, you can't waste words. You have to deliver a very uh, concise argument for the topic that you're talking about and also do it in an in, in entertaining way. And what I loved about it was uh, that you're right, that the audience, I mean, especially nowadays, uh, that people are working from their home, they're, they're not uh, get to be live with hundreds of people who are just super excited with the day to actually go into the room uh, prior to the, the, the TED Talk uh, event itself and to meet some incredibly talented speakers and people. I mean, many of whom I've uh, created uh, relationships with. I mean, one of uh, the, the people that I probably speak with the most that I met at a, a TEDx event is actually an, ad, uh, an advisor to President Zelensky in the Ukraine. Wow. And, uh, and, and, and founder, one of the founders of the American uh, University in Kiev in the Ukraine. And, and just a, just a super interesting uh, uh, fellow, right? And so to kind of be prior to the event, meeting all these different speakers from all over uh, the world with just super interesting backgrounds. And then the process of memorizing your presentation so that you've got it down perfectly. You're not relying on any notes or any cues making sure that your body language is uh, properly reflective of the types of movements or uh, just the various uh, ways in which you might have eye contact with the folks within the audience. And then just getting up there when you were announced to go speak and listening to kind of the, the polite uh, applause within the crowd, you could tell they're kind of rooting for you. And then when it ended, like this huge roar of uh, just people just loved it. And then once the event was done, in both cases, just meeting people in the crowd who just tell you how much they learned or loved the, the talk and, and might have additional follow up questions. And so it was really everything about it, right? All of those things that just made it so special and it was one of those uh experiences that i would say it was a bucket list item so i was fortunate enough to be able to check it twice and uh and and i'd do it again quite frankly uh even though i'm maybe a little bit older than most uh ted talk speakers I think I think age at that point it does not matter at all any uh, you know and I'm really um I really want to do it as well I'm I'm trying to yeah to uh, I know already what I want to talk about and uh, it would be like cultural differences uh, in marketing and in um generally uh, um uh, the speech how to talk to a customer in in different languages not only the language as well of the um, the cultural aspect, you know, it's it's very important because people think they can just translate and then the message will go through. No, it's the localization actually in the back. So this is it's something which I really want to like work on and make it really big. And uh, you know, having a speech of fifteen minutes for that, you need to you need to put something together which is uh, not too easy, um, and it needs to uh, sound as well um, catching for uh, for the audience. So uh, definitely, I know. Uh, what you have done, and I know that it's uh, that is definitely something uh, amazing. It must be an amazing uh, feeling as well. Um, now, uh, at the moment, you are um, a marketing advisor um, at um, Insight Partners. Um, did you fund the company, or uh, are you actually an advisor in this company? So uh, Insight Partners is one of the largest venture capital firms uh, around the globe. And so uh, I became an advisor at Insight after we successfully exited. Uh, I've been with two of Insight's portfolio companies. One of them uh, went public. It was a real success story uh, here in the States. And then the other one uh, had one of the largest uh, uh, exits in the technology sector in okay. uh, in uh, 2022, uh, and so 
uh, because uh, I had the opportunity to experience really good results and probably ultimately uh, help uh, Insight gain a great return on their investments, they uh, asked me if I would uh, help other portfolio companies learn how to get a better return on their marketing investments. So today, an advisor really is all about working with uh, uh, quite a few uh, companies around the globe and just helping them improve their digital marketing. Okay, I think that's uh, pretty straightforward. And um, for for example, because you're working in the marketing space and um, as well have a very good experience, what are your favorite brands or is there a favorite brand that you have um, what you would say yeah, they really do an amazing job? I, I think that there are so many great marketing stories, right? I don't really just break it down into one brand, but the way that I think about it is there was a study that was done by uh, the analyst firm McKinsey. And what they uh, found was that 83% of CEOs expected their marketing to drive most of their company's growth, but those same CEOs were dissatisfied with their marketing results. And, and so I really try to study that rather than necessarily focusing in on like one brand, because what I've learned is that there's so many sales and marketing leaders that are overwhelmed by achieving revenue expectations that they are just not meeting. And it's impacting companies of all sizes. And so uh, really what I have learned is that the way people buy today has totally changed, right? Yes. There was a, a study done by uh, uh, an analyst firm called the Gartner Group. And and it was there was a real interesting finding that they had, which was um, that 67% of buyers really don't look at their sales rep as the primary source of information, right? And so the way uh, buying has changed is that buyers now rely on digital content to make purchase decisions, right? And, and yet a, a lot of companies marketing hasn't fully adapted and capitalized on that reality. And oftentimes they're looking for some like silver bullet, like there's some magical answer that is going to solve uh, that that problem. And what I found working with so many companies is that it's it's really not about like that that silver bullet, that magic that that they're looking for. It's it's that their foundation from a marketing perspective is just weak or lacking. And it's those core principle, digital marketing principles that they have uh, not uh, successfully put in place that their that their marketing team must change uh, to improve their ability to becoming great online to helping their companies consistently grow revenue. That's what I have seen as much as anything. And and the brands that seem to do the best they understand and do a great job of that you know it's the, and that's why exactly I, I told you before um i want to do the the this tedx talk about the uh, uh localization and and you know understand your customer not only understand your customer in english understand your customer in all the languages and localize that content so because this is what we actually do we are an amazon listing localization an optimization, so SEO optimization company and HEO as well. So we as well do the visual because different countries, they want to see different things. Maybe some countries have models on the pictures. Maybe like in Northern Europe, they don't mind. They have um, normal uh, without makeup or anything, a bit more uh, uh, on the uh, land side or, you know, there there is different needs uh, for different countries. There's different customers there. And, and this is what most of the companies don't now understand anymore. So for example, there is coming companies coming from the US, coming into Europe, and they think, yeah, we're a US company, we can sell anything we want. It's not possible anymore. It's not anymore because we have so much that the customer nowadays is is is, is so spoiled um, 
that uh, and that he don't want maybe something which for 10 years ago, 20 years ago, he would have bought. Now they want something else. Now they want something which resonates maybe with their country more or is maybe even made in their own country. There are so, so many different things. And that's why I really like to, to talk about this. And it's it's really good how you, how you said it because um, the big companies still think that they can go into a market and just begin selling. And I can tell you plenty, plenty um, mistakes or, or um, uh, yeah, mistakes I can say what companies did when they enter other markets and they don't listen um, to agencies because they have their in-house staff and they think they know better. But anyway, the, anything, everything is changing right now. We're going into a whole other age and the years, or I think even you're looking now at the months, look what happened with the aggregators, which bought so many brands on, on Amazon um, from 13 billion. We went down to 2 billion last year. So it's, it's, it's an upside down. It's an ever adapting environment. And we need to be very fast in order to, you know, to 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 catch it. So the the time frame of um, something happening, something is changing, is much faster than uh, ten years ago or fifteen years ago. So we really need to make sure that we understand where we put our feet and that we really go go with the flow. So um, this is something I'm always trying to speak about. I'm trying as well to to work on this because, like I said, we're in a never changing um, environment. So, um, Steve, um, a few more questions for you as well. Um, what what can people expect from you for the for maybe for the next years, or what what what, what do you plan? Is there anything specifically what you, what you want to share um, with the audience? Obviously, a third TEDx talk would be amazing, but a part of that. Well, um, I, just in terms of the future, one of the things that I've uh, been working on, right? So for me, I mean, I've I've worked. Primarily within the cybersecurity space, as well as just um, you know IT, uh, just serving IT admins, right? So always uh, technology, and uh, and running marketing or marketing and operations, for example, at the last company that I was with. And so, uh, what one of the things that I tried to do recently is. Um, Beyond just, for example, paying it forward and giving back, I've started to work with a lot more universities. Uh, for example, uh, just yesterday I was on with uh, with a university uh, MBA class uh, in the evening and teaching them about marketing because a lot of what they're learning are things like uh, that that might be associated with like good theory right but but what these mba folks uh, have to realize and especially for a startup person like myself is that the theory is great but like you're under pressure to produce results like today right and so what i try to do was um, give a lot of the university students a sense of some of the things that they're going to encounter uh, and how to think about marketing in terms of things they could actually do Right. And so uh, to to impact results. So I try to get into a lot of the um, not just the, the 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 theory, but really the how to's. And then uh, another thing that I have done recently is uh, there's uh, one of the biggest selling um, fiction authors it, it, around the globe is a is a gentleman by the name of James Patterson. And he has written uh, many, many uh, uh, thrillers, and I uh, and he does so with a number of co-authors. And I uh, recently completed a murder mystery with uh, with two of James Patterson's co-authors, and so it's now sitting with a number of publishers who are reading it to see if they will be interested in publishing it. Wow. But uh, that's one new thing that I try to do was to do some things that I've never done before, in this case, writing a murder mystery. Uh, and uh, and so just just trying to expand my horizons and take on new challenges uh, to learn new things. I think this is super important. The point that you just made um, a part of that, you uh, writing a book, I mean, to 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 embrace challenges every day to try to do something new every day in order not to to get too comfortable, you know, because we're human beings, you know, our brain tells us to to stay comfortable and to 
to uh, to protect us you know but you know this is this is definitely something i'm i'm emphasizing every time if it's if it's just the, 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 and not go another way when you go out of the house or when you go somewhere or just change something in your in your everyday life structure would help already in order to to do something so obviously for you it's on the on the bigger level um of writing a book um talking to mba classes and um, by the way, talking to MBA classes, um, I like I like much to talk to university students, um, although they don't have the experience, for example, of um, of uh, uh, for for running a business. Um, they definitely have um, the knowledge of doing it, and that's and that's quite funny because uh, how they would set up in 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 theory something amazing uh, like setting up a company. For example, myself, I would maybe go completely differently on on that subject than somebody who comes fresh out of school and that's why i like to to um to always talk with uh so, so with university students who come fresh out of school because it's a very fresh thinking and it gives me much inspiration um in order to 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 do something then talk with somebody who maybe is a long time in the business and has already um his yeah. ways um, how to do it exactly and it's so much fun right because these are these are um, young people that are obviously the future and, and they're Definitely. inspired to take on the world and that's a great thing. And so it was really interesting. One of the students yesterday was talking that they are doing an internship at a company and they've been tasked with uh, building a podcast for that company. And so, uh, and they said, well, what ideas do you have, Steve? And I said, well, I said, let me share with you an experience of when the last company I was at, a cybersecurity company, and our buyer were IT admins. And so we had a cybersecurity expert who, who came to me and said, Steve, I want to start doing a podcast. So I said, great, let's, let's do it. But the last thing I wanted to do was to uh, launch a podcast that he could check the box that he completed things that nobody listened to right sure and so so we knew for example that our buyers the it admins hung out online and where they did but also where they were being trained uh to get additional education and certification and so on and one of the big companies in that space was an organization called cybrary so I told the student how I went to the organization Cyberary and uh, proposed an idea where we jointly deliver a cybersecurity podcast and information to their IT admins uh, around cybersecurity. And they loved it. They said, that's sure. a great idea, right? And they have tens of thousands of IT admins around the globe. And literally within three months, we had one of the largest cybersecurity podcasts around the world. Wow. And so, so really the, 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 the lesson for the student was don't just build a plan around a podcast that nobody listens to, but, but some creative idea that that person could actually use to uh, p perhaps change the game and figure out how they could deliver a podcast that that uh is widely listened to and and actually contributes to not only visibility but but revenue growth this is exactly what i'm saying because of the the, the theory um what they have their their thinking is different so they want to build a plan around it whilst whilst when when i thought about it it was like uh, okay let, let's just do it you know that the, there is a need there is people who want to know more about entrepreneur being a digital entrepreneur being an entrepreneur in, in general um maybe even selling on amazon all of these things and you know and here we go and just started you know i think we should not overthink these type of things because we're in a digital economy now there are so many people who are doing this so you you need to try to stand out and standing out is not by um you know, crafting something and thinking too much. It's just go for it and and try your best at it because uh, others doing the same. So I think um, very good point as well, what you just uh, um, uh, said. Um, Steve, uh, Steve wh where can um, people know more about you? I mean, you had two books out, the uh, third one most probably coming. So um, I'm, I'm more than happy to show the books uh, uh, in the comments. 
and as well um, put them into the video, uh, implement them into the video because myself, I will definitely um, order as well these books because I order all the books from the guest I'm, I'm uh, talking to. Yeah, well, uh, any listener could reach me at uh, beastartupsuperstar.com, which is my okay. website, uh, or contact me uh, via LinkedIn directly. Uh, and my books are available really wherever books are sold online. Okay, great. Amazon and all that, all that yes. good stuff. Okay, perfect, perfect. So I have a last question for you. So if you had the attention of the whole world for five minutes, what would be your message to the world? Well, what if I were focusing that message around business, right? I mean, I'd love for there to be peace and harmony everywhere. Sure, sure. Uh, but, um, uh, but what I would say is this, is that in particular, if you are working in business, is that what you're trying to do, obviously, is to win. And, and particularly from a startup perspective, part of that is you're causing some sort of disruption. And causing disruption is hard work. And so to me, one of the most important ingredients to success is realizing there's no substitute for hard work. There's simply no substitute for rolling up your sleeves, getting your hands dirty. I found that no great achievements are possible or sustained without hard work and hard work is the price you'll pay for the success that you desire to achieve. Great. I will put this in a quote. We do this for, uh, for every guest who comes on the show. And then we spread this all over uh, social media. So you will have this quote um, beside your your photo. Um, it's uh, it's it's really nice. Okay, thank you, uh, Steve, for uh, being here today. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Um, it was very valuable, and uh, it's uh, it's amazing. And um, I hope we can do this again, maybe after the third book, and we can talk about the a little bit about the a, a, a fiction book. You know, that would be definitely something new absolutely well thank you for having me omar thank you steve